you know, Grant Stevens, are going to speak about uh, the incident yesterday at Karaka? Uh, thank you for coming. Um, in response to yesterday's murder at Karaka, police have established a dedicated operation which is going to focus on the outlaw motorcycle gangs believed to be responsible for the killing. The name of the operation is Task Force Alpha and the operation will bring together a group of 30 detectives from major crime and the crime gangs task forces. Major crime detectives will be responsible for investigating the murder and the events leading up to it, whilst the crime gangs task force members of this task force will co concentrate on the disruption and prevention of any further outlaw motorcycle gang related violence associated with this particular incident. We can confirm that a 33-year-old man was killed in yesterday's shooting and contrary to media reports, we do not consider this to be an execution-style killing. What we did have was a deliberate shooting and we're extremely fortunate that more people weren't killed as a result of this incident. The shooting occurred at 1.40pm at Unique Custom Paint and Panel, Langford Street, Paraka. We've declared this a major crime. Investigations so far reveal that a group of men walked into the premises armed with guns and fired a number of shots. These men are believed to have fled in two vehicles, a white Nissan hatchback and a white Mazda sedan. We understand and we have information to confirm that the business premises and the victim of this shooting are both linked to the Fink's outlaw motorcycle gang. Detectives are currently trying to establish links between the Mazda sedan which was found burnt out at Kangarilla last night and the shooting incident at Paraka. The car which was burned out has been seized and is being forensically examined. It is widely known that the Finks and the Hells Angels outlaw motorcycle gangs have been involved in a long-running feud. We've had incidents over the last week where both of these groups have come together and we have seen offences committed as a result. There was a disturbance at Finden last Saturday night at a kickboxing event where both of these gangs were involved in a, a dispute and there was also a suspicious house fire at Parafield Gardens on Tuesday evening which is linked to the Hells Angels motorcycle gang. Yesterday afternoon, there was also a disturbance at the Lord of Ink Tattoo Studio at Diamond Road, Salisbury, where a group of men forced their way into the premises and caused extensive damage to the shop's interior. All of these events are being considered as a part of our investigation, but we are not discounting any possibilities at this point in time. I'd like to make the point that South Australia Police are taking significant steps to ensure that this matter is fully investigated and this builds on the work that South Australia Police has already done in relation to the suppression and disruption of outlaw motorcycle gangs in South Australia. Violence by outlaw motorcycle gang members is a common trait of their behaviour and it is a, a trait that we see across Australia, not just in South Australia, and also internationally. These people choose to commit crimes, serious crimes, and operate outside of the law. And whenever we have the opportunity to disrupt their efforts to do so, or take action against those who break the law, we will be stepping in and taking every possible opportunity to intervene and hold them accountable for their actions. Are there any questions? Do you believe the victim was the intended target, or just sending a message to... to At this point in time, we're not making any direct comments in relation to the, the motive for the shooting other than the fact that we believe that it, it relates to outlaw motorcycle gang activity. Definitely Hells Angels versus Finks? We understand there is an ongoing dispute between those two groups and as we said, the business premises and the victim are both linked to the Finks outlaw motorcycle gang, so as a part of our investigation we are examining that ongoing conflict. Do you know how many people in the group that arrived there? We do have information in relation to that, but at this point in time we are not disclosing that and it's part of our investigation. Well, you know, can you know the Finks are Hells Angels members, are they? Beg your pardon? Are they known to be Hells Angels? Uh, at this time, we don't have specific information regarding their identities, but we are following some lines of inquiry now. So you can rule out a, an internal feud with the thing? We haven't ruled anything out at this point. Um, we are absolutely certain that it is OMCG related. Uh, the investigation, we are hopeful, will reveal the, the motive and the people responsible. Was the victim, the victim was actually the owner of the, um, the, the paint shop? No, uh, that's not something we can confirm at this time. Was the victim a patched pink member? Uh, we understand he is linked to the Finks Outlaw Motorcycle Gang, but we do not have information at this time that suggests he was a nominee or a fully patched member. Are you investigating any links between the shooting and the Fink that was thrown off the cliff at Marino recently? Uh, there's an ongoing investigation with that particular incident, and uh, as a result of this uh, shooting incident occurring, we'll be reviewing all of our current active investigations to, to identify any possible links, uh, regardless whether it's related to the Finks, Hells Angels, or other Outlaw Motorcycle Gangs. Can you get out the task force? Um, 
it is the whole reason behind that um, fears of retribution and this boiling into something even more serious than it already is? It's no secret that outlaw motorcycle gangs take matters into their own hands, they commit acts of violence, and when they are the victim of those acts of violence, they seek to use violence in retaliation. Uh, we are aiming to prevent, every at every opportunity, those aspects of retaliation from occurring. Uh, we will be aiming to disrupt their capacity to commit those sorts of offences, and as I've said, we will take action against those we're able to identify and apprehend. Were there the targets in the warehouse, did they fire any shots back? Were there any guns used on that side of the uh, I'll, I'll just leave it at the fact that the people who attended at the premises were armed with firearms and discharged those firearms at the business premises. So how many shots were firearms? actually fired? We're and not disclosing the number of shots at this stage. And how many firearms and what sort? And we're also not disclosing that. Uh, do you know at all um, any more details on the car that's still at large? The other As I said, we are investigating a burnt out vehicle which was located last night at uh, Kangarilla. We're also making inquiries in relation to the other vehicle which was involved. And that's obviously a key part of our investigation and we're aggressively pursuing those leads. Is uh, there any number plate or anything that might be handled? Not at this there? time, not that we are able to release. At this point, um, are we still certain or is it looking like it's just the one person who was um, the victim in the, the target. The tar you know, it was the targeted man, the, the man who's died. Was he the only person who was injured? Do we know if anyone else suffered injuries? Um, there were no further injuries as a result of this incident. Um, we're not prepared to disclose at this time the specific target or motivation behind the shooting. Um, that will be part of our investigation and as further information becomes available we'll be more than happy to provide that but it's important that we continue with our investigation at this stage. Are the people yeah. in the warehouse uh, cooperating with the police? Um, there is some limited cooperation. Um, and I, I think that's another feature of people who are associated with outlaw motorcycle gangs. Uh, they have a history of impeding our investigations by their lack of cooperation, their lack of um, willingness to provide meaningful support to a police investigation. And it has been the case in the past where they resort to their own devices to settle these scores with the inference that the police don't do anything when these sorts of crimes occur to them. And that's because they don't help us. If uh, we were to get the sort of support we get from every other member of the community in these investigations, there would be uh, a substantially higher level of resolution in terms of people being prosecuted for violent crime committed against bikies. Is this new task force being established because, because crimes gangs can't keep up with workload? No, that's, that's not the case. Task Force Alpha is being established to ensure that we put adequate resources to this intensive investigation. There is a significant amount of work that has to be done and it's appropriate that we have dedicated investigators working on those investigations. Crime Gangs Task Force will continue to do its normal work, which includes investigating crimes committed by other outlaw motorcycle gang members in South Australia, as well as disrupting their, their activities uh, and ensuring that their behaviours are consistent with the expectations of the community in terms of public safety. Are you aware of any Hells Angels being brought in from interstate? Um, we're certainly looking at all aspects in relation to our investigation, but we wouldn't be commenting on that at this point in time. Graham, do you think this was a club-sanctioned uh, incident, do you? The Hells Angels club-sanctioned incident? Or was these renegades? Oh, well, again, well, we're not able to comment on that. Um, we are continuing to work on the motive and uh, identifying people responsible. Um, that will come out in the fullness of time. I'm told by bikies, with boots to bikies today, that they can't control these young bikes. A lot of these bikes are renegades, they're out of control, they won't. Uh, follow the traditional authority. Is that your information? Oh, I don't have specific information regarding that, but if we reflect over history, members of bikey gangs have been involved in serious violence offences for as long as any of us in this room can remember. To suggest that new people coming into these groups are now becoming violent is, is a joke. These people have been responsible for violent crime for as long as they've been a members of outlaw motorcycle gangs. And we only have to think back to Milpera, which was over 20 years ago. This is nothing new. The new people coming into these groups aren't the ones starting the violent activity. They're, they're picking up a legacy that's been left by people who have been members of outlaw motorcycle gangs for a very long time. How would you describe this feud between the Hills and the Phoenix? I'd say it's a petty feud that they need to get their act together. If they have legitimate issues in terms of offences being committed, come to the police, let us investigate and take action on their behalf. Otherwise, behave like other members of the community. Abide by the laws of the community. Do you know when this latest flare-up, have you pinpointed what actually sparked it? What was the, the first feud in sort of this, this latest um, round, I guess? There are a series of incidents uh, involving conflict between the Hells Angels and the Finks, and uh, we're investigating all of those. They do stem back uh, to 2011 uh, in terms of recent history, but as I said before, there are 
several recent incidents over the last few days that we are looking at that involve members of both the Hells Angels and the Finks, and we're looking at the linkages they may have to the investigation we're now conducting. Did yesterday's arrival of um, quite a few Finks members and associates at the scene, um, did that help police at all? Um, you know, a lot of them were giving their IDs to officers there. Um, you know, what's happened with, with that there? It might come as no surprise that we don't need bikies to give us their identification. We know who they are. Um, what would be helpful is if they actually supported our investigation by providing meaningful information. Do you know who you're looking for, Grant? I can't disclose that at this time. It's, uh, there are a range of uh, inquiries that are being currently undertaken and uh, we're hopeful that we'll have uh, further uh, information coming forward as a result of that. Have you raided property since... Uh, yes, uh, we can't disclose any of the operational activity that's been going on, but as, uh, as you would expect, with a team of uh, 30 detectives dedicated to this particular investigation, um, there are a lot of people being spoken to and a lot of premises being visited. How would you say our anti-bikey anti laws are working at the moment, given this flare up? Do you think they're enough? Uh, the anti-bikey laws that we currently have at our disposal are quite effective, and uh, it's not always the case that uh, the use of these laws is seen in the public arena. Um, we have um, opportunities for uh, offenders of violent crime to um, be refused bail. Um, but they need to prove they're, they're worthy of bail as opposed to automatically receiving bail. We have legislation that allows us to protect vulnerable witnesses. We have the opportunity to issue firearm prohibition orders against uh, people who have firearms history. Uh, we are able to issue public safety orders and we issued a public safety order at the uh, kickboxing event which occurred on Saturday as a result of the dispute between the Hells Angels and the Finks. We have the ability to have non-association orders issued against members of criminal organisations and there are a range of other uh, aspects of the anti-bikey laws which we fully utilise at this time. What I would like to say is anybody who suggests that the South Australia Police aren't doing everything that they possibly can to stem and disrupt bikey violence is is making a comment from a misinformed position. We dedicate significant resources to outlaw motorcycle gang activity and we dedicate resources to investigations where serious crimes are committed by members of bikey gangs. In addition to that, we have a management plan which involves every member of SAPOL ensuring that they have the capacity, the knowledge and the tools to engage with outlaw motorcycle gang members at every opportunity and as a result of that management plan we've had over 400 arrests and reports in the last two years of, against people associated with outlaw motorcycle gangs. There's intensive effort on the part of South Australia Police to ensure that bikies are kept within the laws of South Australia. When you have people who resort to violence and have no regard for community standards or community laws, they are going to find ways to take those matters into their own hands. And the nature of the people we're talking about is that they resort to violence. They use firearms and it is very difficult to stop someone who believes they are operating outside of the laws of South Australia. So are they, hard, are they impossible to stop then, Grant? They've killed, they've murdered another person with the laws you've got? If, if a person decides that they're going to take such severe action and take matters into their own hands, then yes, it can be very difficult to stop individuals who act in this manner. But having said that, we've had arrests in the last 12 months for members of outlaw motorcycle gangs for murder offences, extortion, blackmail, rape, serious assaults, firearms offences, drug offences and a range of other crimes that directly attribute to their connection to outlaw motorcycle gangs. There is a significant amount of success in dealing with outlaw motorcycle gangs but once again they are a well established organised crime group in South Australia as they are with every other jurisdiction in Australia and because of that, we continue to put resources towards fighting this outlaw motorcycle gang phenomenon. You sound very angry about all this. Well, the actions of this particular group yesterday not only affect other members of outlaw motorcycle gangs, it affects every member of the community. It raises fear within people who choose to abide by the laws of South Australia. And we all have a right to expect that we can walk safely through industrial areas, shopping precincts, restaurant areas without fear of being involved in some crossfire incident involving people who think they know better and who think they can take the laws into their own hands. We'll do what we can to prevent that and to make sure that South Australia is as safe as it can be. And yes, I am angry about what's happened. Um, with this tattoo parlour in Salisbury, is that the Hells Angels at all? Beg your pardon? The tattoo parlour in Salisbury where a group of families... Uh, we believe it's connected to the Finks outlaw motorcycle gang. Okay, thank you. Just one last one, if I can. Uh, the Pocarelli murder, has there been any update on that? Or was that associated with this investigation? That investigation is ongoing. 
Um, might I say that uh, anyone who challenges the efforts of the South Australia Police only has to look at the, the presence of the Comanchero Outlaw Motorcycle Gang in South Australia. They're virtually decimated because of the work of the Crime Gangs Task Force. Um, it's, a, it's a significant result that their, their, their foothold in South Australia has been dislodged. Uh, we have no significant presence of that group here at this point in time. In fact, their, their main presence seems to be in uh, correctional institutions as a result of the work of the South Australia Police. But is Pop really associated with this investigation? Okay. No. Thank you. Thank you.